everybody. Lovely to be able to gather again together around the, the Word of God this evening and uh, to do so as we are coming into these closing passages of Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. And that's where our Moravian daily text for today in the New Testament is found. It's in um, 1 Corinthians 16, the first 11 verses. And um, in some sense, as is common with Paul's letters, it seems that these passages are really kind of almost housekeeping, um, just relational communications, lots of uh, travel plans, uh, talk of kind of money and, and such things, but also people, especially people with Paul, I might say. Um, and, and here um, he's going to reference uh, Timothy, um, who was, as it were, a son to him in the ministry. But whilst it might seem like it's just kind of the ordinary toings and froings of kind of friendships and connections and relationships and church administration, actually, these things are indicative and reflective of, of deeper truths that give us insight into things that are of genuine significance and importance. And so as we go through these things, reflect upon them. If you have comments or thoughts of your own, then do add them into the chat as we go along and encourage one another in these ways. Now, I just want to zoom in, if we may, just for a moment, um, right into verse 9 um, of our reading today. And um, um, Paul, is he says he's going to stay in Ephesus until Pentecost. As it happens, this coming Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. We're going to have an absolutely fantastic time, uh, both with our celebration in our building and then afterward, uh, we're going to be having um, something of, a, of an international feast together and some fun and games and singing outdoors and uh, please god the weather will improve um but we, we've got some contingency plans so it's going to be great but pentecost such a significant time uh for christians um tonight is not about that particularly it just happens that paul is writing he's writing in ephesus in the lead up to pentecost in in the springtime there but he says this, uh, as he is there ministering in Ephesus, he says, a wide door for effective work has opened to me. And there are many adversaries. Now, there's a couple of things I want us to note here, and then we can see what, how that might work its way out um, in, in our um, manner of living. Um, the wide door for effective work has opened itself uh, to um, Paul um, this is not something that he has kind of fashioned or worked out in himself except just that he's, he's diligently doing the work of God and, and God has sovereignly opened this door um, and and there are many adversaries look all too often uh, Christians you me um, we think that uh, when we're doing the will of God that we're just going to be in this kind of, you know, moment of, of peace and serenity and everything will all just come together gloriously and we'll know that we're doing the right thing because we'll have peace in our hearts and everything will just kind of come together and beautifully, wondrously, we will know that all is right with the world. Hmm. Uh, these verses, verses like them, which are littered throughout the book of Acts and through all of Paul's letters and the other letters, demonstrate that actually doing the work of God is not always, indeed quite rarely, allied with peace in our circumstance. Actually, to, to have uh, an open door of God, an open door of heaven, effectiveness in ministry often comes with adversaries and, and tough times and battling things out. Don't fool yourself <laughs> into thinking, I'll know the will of God because then I'll be at peace and everything will go swimmingly. Yeah, maybe, but the, the evidence of scripture is probably not. The, the, there is going to be a toughing it out. There is going to be a facing down of the adversary. There is going to be spiritual battles on our knees in prayer and diligently committing ourselves to the purposes of God. But God still opens wide doors for effective ministry. Uh, you know, it, it, it can be tough, um, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. <laughs> It could be hard work, but that may well be an indicator, actually, that, that the hard work will reap a reward. It will be effective. You know, don't grow weary in doing good, the scriptures teach us. You know, we will um, reap that reward, that harvest, um, 
if we don't give up. So um, we just want to continue the, the, that, that thought really about the calling and the ministry of, of Paul and what that means for us. That the wide open door is opened up. But everything that precedes it is just Paul making decisions to put one foot in front of another and to do what seems right uh, to him in ministry. Look, the calling of God upon every believer is really simple. It's really simple. Don't get things complex, complicated. Look, you're supposed to becoming, be becoming more like Jesus, just living a holy life, being sanctified by the Spirit of God. But then that life has these particular purposes invest yourself in the believers in the church and then go and break new ground for the kingdom of god so what is paul doing look he's in ephesus he's breaking new ground he's investing himself in the church he's going to um come across the top there to, to macedonia um and he's going to minister there no doubt and then he's going to come through uh to um the, the church in corinth um and he wants to spend time with them. He wants to give himself to these people. He's going to be in Ephesus until Pentecost. He spends time with people. He's going to travel through Macedonia. He's going to give himself, invest himself. And he's going to come to Corinth because he doesn't want to just pass through. He wants to invest himself. Look, the call of God on your life, I can say this with 100% certainty, is to devote yourself to one another. It's to give yourself to the church, not just to pass through, not just to, you know, be in one another's lives momentarily or, or just to see one another on a Sunday every once in a while. The call of God is for you to be invested in the community of the saints, in the church, locally, where you are. It's not to be just flitty and flighty. Um, it's really to be devoted. And the call of God um, in that context of investing ourselves in one another does involve cost you know just as when we're we're breaking new ground and doing new things paul is seeing adversaries though it be an open door of god and though there be effectiveness so also then there is cost when we invest in one another paul begins these verses we have tonight talking about um taking up um, an offering to invest in the saints having a collection setting aside money doing it on the first day of the week on the sabbath the sunday and um, storing this up, he says that he's already instructed the church in Galatia in this way. We know that um, Macedonian Christians gave. A lot of these, this giving was going to Christians in need um, in Judea and Jerusalem, uh, where they were under particular persecution and found themselves suffering from, from famines on occasion and other such things. Um, but they are the, the general principle remains the same. To be a Christian is to give yourself in time, spend time with one another really invest and it is to give yourself according to your material possession according to your finance you know in second corinthians chapter 8 paul says um that, that, that we ought to give according to um, what we have but then he says also that that these macedonian christians they gave beyond um what they considered they had you know there's a costliness in the investment in the people of God, in, a, in the church, in its ministry, in its mission. You know, all through this pandemic season as a church, we've been saying the general principle is this. If you have a need, ask. Now, it's right that the family of God should meet one another's needs. But if you have the capacity to give, and the principle from the Macedonian Christians is you give beyond what is comfy. Well, if you have the capacity to do that, then give. Don't withhold from one another. That's It can't possibly be the church of Jesus if we withhold our ability to bless one another, serve one another in God's purposes. It can't possibly be the Christian church if we withhold our time from one another. Paul here makes this case plain. He's just describing the ordinary things of life. You know, it's he's not got an extraordinary calling that he's describing here. He's just saying, I'm going to go, I'm going to hang out here God's doing some great things, so I'm just going to di deep dive into that. I'm going to go through Macedonia, spend some time there. I'm going to spend some time with you. Look, Christian, stop sitting on your bottom, waiting upon a, a calling that is going to miraculously appear out of heaven from nowhere. The calling is plain in the text. Invest yourself in the people of God with your time, with your finance and your material ability to, to give one to another. 
invest yourself in the church and then with God's church break new ground it is for people like Paul who are doing this practicing it it's for churches like in Galatia Macedonia here in Corinth as they got their act together it's for those kinds of churches that God opens wide doors and makes effective ministry he just simply doesn't do it for people who aren't invested in his people and in his purposes stop trying to put the cart before the horse get it right invest yourself give yourself pay the price and then see what doors god will open for your effectiveness come on shall we pray together Paul was doing the business. Timothy, as we read at the end of those verses, he's going to come and do the business. Paul says, let no one despise him. He says this to Timothy, doesn't he? Let no one despise you because of your youth, but set an example. Come on. If we're to follow in the example of Paul and Timothy, we, don't, we know we don't want anyone to despise us. It's a good principle not to despise one another. But let's come on. Let's take up the mantle of Timothy. Let's set an example in these things that Paul has set an example for us in let's pray jesus oh god would you make us a people who are not sat around waiting for some miraculous moment but people who recognize that the miracle of salvation of being welcomed into the family of god has been accomplished by you already and so we're to work it out with the fear and trembling that we've talked about recently god let us be people who invest ourselves heart and soul time and money a diligent service love listening all of these things just give it <laughs> set it aside to make the sabbath a sunday a precious time of setting these things aside investing ourselves not just for a flash in the pan but but really spending time with one another giving ourselves even though it be costly even though it mean that we might have less if for the sake of one another having having what we need we'll do this and uh, and god we want to set these examples we're thankful for those who have set an example for us and taught us continue to do so god help us to walk in these ways amen amen well god bless you in these things i look forward uh, to seeing you over these evenings of course but most particularly pentecost sunday that's coming up god bless you we're going to have an absolutely fantastic time good night